I've never been in the habit of just letting people die like animals in a cage, whatever their crimes may be. This woman doesn't look like a dead walker. That's enough for me. We'll take it back to Valvanor, and you can tell your stories to them. Stay away, you stupid girl! No! Fools! Leave her in that cage! Now meet your eternity. What are you doing to him? Let him go! Very well. You may have him. I am finished. Father? Father? Oh no, no! This can't be happening! You're gonna wish you had died back there in that cell, you sick bitch! Wait, wait! If I am to die, I wish to know who stands before me. I am Falcon, Powder Master of the Freeborn Blades. And as for the man you made the mistake of killing, he was our... That is not my question. Who stands before me? Are you an imbecile or blind? I might be the mercenary who is going to grab you by your snake of a tongue and throw you into the darkest pit he can find. From what I can see, you're an imbecile, incapable of piercing the face that hides the true nature of the Red Scribes. Well, I can pierce your face, if that's all you want, in several places. Mock, if you like, lamb that you are. You insist on believing that your employers are only scholars, curious and inoffensive. Can you not see more? Red scribes, ice lords, they come from the same mold, and they want the same thing. Some are simply more successful in their efforts. Aeolus thought I possessed knowledge which he could use to become the equal of the Ice Lords. That's why he questioned me. That's ridiculous! You are the monster! You're a liar! My father wasn't like that! A liar! You murderer! You'll pay for what you did! Sybil, wait! Which, I suggest you behave yourself if you don't want to find yourself back rotting in that cell of yours. I'm far from finished with you. I have questions. Lots of questions. And you had better make damn sure I like the answers. So be it. Then I will tell you exactly what you want to hear, mercenary. You had the upper hand. Why did you decide to kill the leader of the Red Scribes? I desperately needed to replenish my power, so I drained his. My mood grows a bit murderous when I get too hungry, or when I spend too many days trapped in a filthy cell without so much as a toilet. Your friend was no hero. His aim was to reproduce the same ancient rituals that permitted powerful magicians to become the Ice Lords that we are fighting even now. He wasn't my friend. He was my employer and a very influential man. You could have spared him, giving credence to your version of events, but you chose to kill him, and thus any chance of them listening to you. He was a deceitful and manipulative man. No one would have listened to me, so I permitted myself the pleasure of preventing him from harming anyone else. The World Heart has had nothing but suffering from these magicians. I rejoice at this death. We need more like it. Let's say I understand your reasons, but it was still a reprehensible thing to do that has put us both in a seriously shitty situation. We're going to have to play this right in Valvador. We'll try to talk with a steward, or the Red Scribes will lynch you without a second thought. We? Oui. Am I to infer that you're going to help me, gentle mercenary? Somebody has to deal with it. You seem to take pleasure in exposing yourself. To trouble, I mean. It's true. I hate denying myself a little pleasure, 
But I'm not worried about the outcome. Aeolus's daughter saw everything. She is an innocent and will confirm everything that happened here. All you need to do is deliver your model prisoner to your steward. Besides Elas, did you see any of the other Red Scribes? I was drugged before being brought here. Aeolus is the only scribe who came to visit me during my captivity. But his second in command must have known. Although I don't know exactly how much Aeolus was able to manipulate his puppets. If they are all as naive as his daughter, I imagine the temptation must have been great. The Red Scribes performed a ritual in an ancient temple. Does that mean anything to you? So that's the reason why he disappeared. The ritual was designed to augment his power. Had it succeeded, he would have become an accomplished magician, the first step toward becoming an Ice Lord. Given the ease with which I killed him, I suspect the ritual was a failure, or at least a partial failure. Let's just say the results weren't quite what he was hoping for. But something definitely happened. There was a burst of light. Or maybe flame. And this thing entered inside me. A thing? What thing? A sort of parasite. The Red Scribes told me it was a demon. Neither one nor the other, insolent boy. I bring thee flames. I bring thee the world heart. I bring thee the power, and thou wilt have hold me back with thy ingratitude and thy weak, pitiful body. Thou darest name me Parasite. Hello? You still here? Huh? Oh yeah, I forgot to mention. He's kind of sensitive. I must say, I have never heard of such a thing. It is, at the very least, troubling. The end result is I sometimes find myself wondering who I am, what I am. That is, when we're not arguing, or it's not taking control without asking me what I think about it. Then again... This is absolutely fascinating. I think, when we get the chance, we should talk about it in more depth. Meaning we undoubtedly need to experiment a bit. There is probably much to learn from this demon. We'll see. For now, we've got more pressing problems. Let's finish this discussion in Valvanor. Better get back before they send a battalion out to look for us. Have you decided what you're going to do with me? I'm working on it. Meanwhile, I remain a prisoner. You are free to do what you want as long as you stay in the village or with me. But if you cross the line, I'm the one who will straighten you out. So one false move and I blow you up. It's painful. Are we clear? Yes, very clear. And perfect timing as well. It just so happens that I have absolutely no intention of disturbing this delicious village in any way. A place whose tragic end now seems ordained, and over whose corpse the red scribes and freeborn blades will scrabble in the bleeding mud. A spectacle which promises to be unique, and one I would dream of missing for the world. Well, enjoy the show. But if I ever need your help, I want to be able to count on it. Hmm, very well. You may consider that we have an arrangement. I would like to ask you a few questions. Alas called you a sorceress. Well, are you one? A sorceress? Only a rube or an imbecile would call someone a sorceress. 
If Aeolus had even a minimum of intelligence and discernment, he would have chosen another term. I do a bit of magic, it's true, but that makes me a magician. Nonetheless, my abilities could never rival those of a Lord of the Frozen Shadows, even if I am far more powerful than any Red Scribe will ever be. So this demon inside me, what is it? I can't say for sure. I've only rarely ever seen something so interesting. But all the same, I'm certain of one thing. Your host is directly linked to the World Heart. To the World Heart? It's a simple question of logic. The ritual performed by the scribes had to make contact with the World Heart somehow. Your affinity for flames is a crucial clue. Okay, but what's my role in all this? For now, you are the vehicle. You'll have to decide if you're going to use its power, or just be a simple vessel. Can we win this war? You already know the answer. What was the last battle the Dead Walker army lost? I... I never heard of them losing a battle. In fact, the last time was 12 years ago. In those days, Vertiol didn't even know the Lords of the Frozen Shadows existed, or that they were at war. This all took place in a kingdom in the Northeast. I don't recall the name, but their victory was destined to be short-lived. A few days after having stopped the Deadwalker army, the kingdom was razed to the ground by an even greater offensive. But then it is possible to win a battle. You haven't understood. Whatever the result of a battle, the Deadwalker army feeds. Whether they win or lose, they always prevail. All the bodies that fall are eventually integrated into their ranks. It's a war of attrition. If it were only military victory they sought, yes. But don't forget, they are crafty and intelligent. They can defeat you long before you are overwhelmed by a ruse or by magic. Sounds promising. Thanks.